Did they set the alarm on their watch for when an hour's done? <laughs> I don't think they had on our watch. They went by the sun. I walk past it, I see all the, the oh, walls. Oh, you can do your then, yeah, yeah, yeah. My knife is better than the museum knife. good for when it's wet because well, even if your feet um, get totally wet like they say well, um, yeah, this is the, this yeah, is the same as this <coughs> see how strong this is <coughs> yes. no, it's not going anywhere it's very very strong stuff yeah it does um, i'll get a sword as well shall i
And then they went up into the Midlands towards Wat Watford, by which time the Roman army had come down from Anglesey to meet the Celtic tribe. And it's said by the ancient writers that the Romans were outnumbered by eight to one. So the Roman general assembled his men in a valley, put their backs to the va valley so they couldn't get away, and they said, you either do, you either win the battle or you die. They did win the battle, uh, but at that time, if they'd lost the battle, it was very, very likely that the Romans would have withdrawn from Britain and we wouldn't have had the Roman period, which went on to 410 AD. So the Romans were here, uh, ruled Britain for nearly 400 years. Those soldiers that came in the uh, 43 AD and in the second half of the first century were equipped as you see the men in front of you. These are Roman legionary soldiers. They joined the legion. A legion was 5,300 men. They joined the legion for 25 years, and during that uh, 25 years were not allowed to make a legal marriage. If they were married when they joined the army, the actual process was an automatic form of divorce. This man looks as if he wants to join up straight away. of the soldier, large helmets with cheek pieces either side of the face, big neck guard, and a reinforcement on the front to take sword blows. Some of them have got male shirts on, that's the one with the uh, rings of metal, and some of them have got the strip armour, uh, which is made of plates of metal, riveted inside to leather straps. Around the bottom plates of the armour you've got a military belt, and in the front of the belt you get this peculiar apron supposedly for the protection of lower stomach and private parts although we find this more psychological than practical and 
fact, if you're running, it can be a damn nuisance. Tough leather footwear. Some have got sandals. Some have got boots. But in common to both types, you can see loads of nails, hobnails, in the bottoms of the sandals. They carry a shield. The shield is made of laminated wood. What do we mean by laminated wood? It means thin layers of wood with the grain going in opposite directions. What do we do today to make the great... We promise you a spectacular display of Roman violence for your family. Hope you, hope you enjoy it. So we want you to join in. Don't jump the ropes. That's too messy legally. No, no, stay behind the ropes. Keep your arms and legs back behind the ropes because sometimes swords break, shields break, etc., etc. Uh, we like an we like audience participation, in, and in doing that, we like you to do this. If you want a gladiator to be spared, if you want to show them mercy, you wave your hand. Forget the thumbs up, thumbs down business. That started in the early days of Hollywood. Uh, we think it's a much more visual device for the editor, a much more clear device to actually show the editor, uh, the sponsor of the games, what the public opinion was. If you want the gladiator to be spared, wave your hands. Wave your hands and shout, Mite! Can we do that? Mite! Mite! Where do we get the word mitigating from? Mite! Mite! Spare them, or just spare them if you forget, doesn't really matter. If you're rich, wave your jewellery. So, Mite! Mite! Now, if you're a sick individual and you want a gladiator to die, you thrust your thumb forward and you shout, Eugula! Eugula! Or just kill it. Whatever you want to do. Now, if you're on this side, if you're near the red flags, you're cheering for Londinium, for the red team. Let's have a cheer, come on. If you're on this side, you're cheering for Camilla Dunham, the gold team, Colchester. So we've got two separate teams of gladiators. If you're in the middle, well, you decide. It's up to you entirely. So we've got two sets of gladiators. Now, you're very, very lucky. Colchester is a wonderful place. It's full of layers and layers of history. This is the old territory of the Trinovantes tribe, Essex, largely Essex and Colchester, the Trinovantes tribe. And up there, you can imagine before the Romans got here, there had been a series of huts of great power base. And then when the Romans came, they took it over. It became a colonia. The Roman soldiers were settled there. And then, of course, it made Boudicca very angry. Various things happened, and Boudicca came down with a massive tribe from the north. Everybody disaffected, everybody fed up. They swept into Colchester and absolutely trashed the place. Some of the uh, veterans and the people who lived here in this new town fled into the wooden temple of Claudius up on the hill there where the castle stands today. And those rebels, they set fire to the temple and killed everybody in it. Then they went on to London and did similar stuff there. And then they went to St Albans and trashed that as well. So, uh, well, the rest is history. But you have layers upon layers. Some awful things happened here. Some incredible things happened here as well. It's such a lovely town full of layers of history. It was instrumental in the Barons' War in the medieval time. The castle was occupied by the invading French and they stayed for quite a while. And in the, in the, in the English Civil War, um, it held out and people were executed up there in the mountains. And it became a prison. And uh, as I say, some incredible things have happened here, some awful things. And uh, perhaps recently the most awful thing that has happened in Colchester, in Colchester was um, I got fined for driving in the bus lane, but that's a different story. Anyway, so um, we want you to take part today, and uh, we want you to shout to your gladiator, and let's have a practice cheer for the red team! Yeah. Practice cheer for the gold team! Yeah. Excellent. Now, here's a little bit of a warning, and if you feel you might be traumatised, because there's going to be quite a lot of blood splashing around today, if you're going to be traumatised by the sight of blood flying about, it might suffer any long-term effects, then tough, you shouldn't be here! We hope you enjoy it. Are you a great, sick, sick British audience? Yeah. Excellent stuff. Excellent. As I said, we promise you a spectacular display of Roman violence for a family. Now, what we'd like to do is introduce you to a few people. Uh, first of all, coming out onto the arena, we have a we have a guest here today. We have the Governor of Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alas Platios! Escorted by a detachment of the Praetorian Guard, provided today by the Colchester Romans, Colchester Roman Society. Here they are. Now, please cheer the governor. Come on. Yeah. Cheer him. He'll fix the potholes. He'll fix the A12 so you can actually get in and out of Colchester. <laughs> 
fantastic. There he is, Mr. Alice Partis. And uh, he's about to take his seat. Now, he's the editor, the sponsor of the games today, and he wants you to have a thoroughly good time. Now, the thing is, Colchester, um, there's a wonderful bar summit, Colchester with Blackbird Bar, and uh, it was found in, I believe, 1853 in Colchester, and it was, it was a vase used to take someone's ashes. Um, but the interesting thing is, the actual vase itself had images of gladiators, two gladiators fighting. And a really interesting thing, um, they analysed it recently, they realised it was made from local clay. So there is a very, very strong theory there was actually an amphitheatre in Colchester. Some people think it was in the area of Northgate Street, but it's never yet been discovered, so we can't be 100% sure. <coughs> and uh, but also, you do have the only, this area has the only known Roman chariot track in Britain on the Lexham Road, and that's at the other side of Colchester. So it's a wonderful area steeped in history. Now today, let's introduce you to some other people coming out to the arena. We have, um, now, this is a priestess of the goddess Nemesis. Now, in pre-Christian times, in, in the Roman period, the goddess Nemesis was important to the gladiators. She was the, represented a uh, changing fortunes, and her, her symbol was a wheel, literally a wheel of fortune. And um, ladies and gentlemen, the priestess of Nemesis. Now the first gladiatorial games were in the days of the old republic and we think actually they were probably even earlier and uh, one of the characters that was used on the arena was actually an, uh, someone dressed as an Etruscan god, the god of death, Charon, the god of death. And here he is and he was used in, uh, in the Roman arena, in the, even in times of the, in the Roman Empire and Charon represented the god of death um, passing the people into the underworld and the later emperor banned them, the issue of the edict banning them in gladiators. So it would be too fucking real. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the red team, we have Rika! <laughs> and today, the governor wants her to fight um, a very vicious Hopinacus gladiator and uh, called Felix. And here he comes, the Hopinacus. Felix for the gold team! Rika for the red! Now, Felix is a little bit annoyed, he's quite contemptuous He's entered into the sky with his spear And uh, because he objects to fighting a gladiatrix And he just said, well I've fought many, many battles, I don't see why I should do this So he's now I think it's going to be a very interesting, very quick contest Or is it? No, if he can start him back, I want to start surprising So Felix is quite surprised by the force of oh, to Oh my goodness, put a dent in her crowd there. So, uh. Yeah, so, you choose the Felix from the Grand Team. Bring it up to your head. Oh! Now, Pika. Pika keeps literally grabbing him in the face there and uh, trying to literally smash the silver helmet of his way. Uh, to hurt his pride even more, but Felix actually completely and utterly underestimated it and now he's been given a run for his money. So Felix is quite... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't know how to pay him Well done. Oh! Where's the guy? Oh. So Felix is quite angry about this. He's now done his design. And uh, he's been reduced to fighting just with a gladius against the spear. So he's, uh, yeah, he's going for the... Can I take him apart this? I bet he is. Let's see, we actually severed the, uh, the thumb in his uh, manacle, the iron guard. 
Netflix this is let off. Ah, uh, we have another TV ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will just check with our pairings. Our final performance today, ladies and gentlemen, we have we have two against two, for the red team we have a provocateur wearing a helmet, almost identical to one that's in protest at us at the moment, family Hawkham. We have a provocateur called Arsas. And on his side, on his side, we have a Thracian called Vitellius. Both fighting for the red team. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a hot and hot so Two against two. Um, over here we have Vespas and Vespas for the gold team. On the other side we have Ursus together. And we have Vitellius to face it. They raise themselves on a shield wall, we must military. But uh, our uh, yellow opponents, the gold opponents, are having none of that. They're going to try and break them up and break them up. We have them getting apart. And over at this end, we have Ursus fighting Bacchus. And over at the other end there, we have Vitellius versus the Yes versus, um, yes, versus Vespas. Uh, so, uh, I wish that Vespas was taking the win. Vespas was taking the win. And Vespas now fighting over here. And the next one's going to be the Oh, the Terrius is taking the wheels as well, so both sides. This could be anyone's contest, I'm glad I didn't bet on this. Oh, Darkus slammed away the horses. And now Vitellius is down. Oh, whoa! Dorcas is down! Dorcas is down! And oh, taken from broken ribs. He's not fighting again today. And over there we have Vespus. Vespus now. Uh, and it looks as though Vitellius is down. Vitellius, I think, is it a do up meter Yugula? I think we'll have to ask people's opinion. No, you're supposed to. Oh, you're supposed to make it. That is absolutely ruthless. Now, that Vespas has no regard for human life. He's the ancestor of every single BMW driver in the world. Doesn't even indicate. No. So it's now Vespas against Ursus. Vespas for the gold team and Ursus for the red team. Ursus is there having none of this. Vespas Shield is being smashed. Yeah.
Now we're in the street guard at back when they're in at 3 o'clock and we are on the back here at 4 o'clock so if you do stay around and if those things are people who beat us and the conscious of our society we'd be happy to talk to you and uh, we hope you enjoy the show and I leave you with a thought I leave you with a profound thought throughout his entire life Throughout his entire life, Julius Caesar never said the word sorry. And that was the important thing to do. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Well, they do not, they demonstrate all the bits of it. Uh, they explain the different men, the uh, different men, in Peter Martin, which is the carriage between camps. And, uh, you know, the shields are covered in leather covers.